Hello, this is Debbie Crawford with the Voices of Kentuckiana, and we're here at Ivy Tech where we're going to talk to Will Wingfield from NDOT and Adam Burns from Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly. And they're going to explain to us some more about some of these um, maps they've got behind us, and as far as the road goes, as you're going to access to the bridge. So we're going to see what these guys have to say. So um, we have a public meeting coming up uh, Thursday, the 18th, at the Brown Gym, and we'll be going through nine different options for the gateway approach to the Milton Madison Bridge. We're calling it Project 421. The website is project421.com. So with uh, uh, that, I'll turn it over to Adam to detail some of the, uh, the different alternatives. Okay, thank you, Will. As Will mentioned, we have nine alternatives that, we'll be, that we are currently looking at um, for the new approach to the Milton Madison Bridge. The first alternative that we are looking at is the no-build alternative. This is something that, that we do have to take a study of um, during any sort of environmental and planning project. Um, it's basically to compare all future alternatives to a, a baseline of the existing condition. Alternative two is an enhancement to the existing alignment. Uh, knowing that there are um, restrictions for the trucks traveling through the corridor, the idea behind this alternative is to improve uh, the intersections for turning radius, uh, radii for truck um, in a way that provides a little bit better access through the corridor. The next alternative is a genesis of the, um, from the last round of public meetings in December. We received a number of comments from the community about looking at um, taking the 421 route down to Jefferson Street and then turning uh, north on Jefferson to connect to existing 421 north of Main Street. After we look at that group of existing alignment alternatives, um, the, next, the, the next set of alternatives really speaks to sort of a grade separation that we want to look at as part of this project. Because of the great vertical distance or difference between uh, Searing Street to the north and Harrison Street to the south, we have to overcome that um, and, and one likely scenario to do that is through a grade separation. Um, in this alternative, um, traffic follows a, a generally southeasterly direction around a curve. It is um, separated from 2nd Street with a bridge um, and then continues on south to the uh, Milton Madison River Bridge. In a very similar alternative, um, we again have a grade separated option, but rather than 421 being the primary route um, with 56 connecting, in, in this alternative, 421 intersects with 56 that maintains the existing alignment. Um, in, in this alternative, we're looking to separate not only the grade, but also the traffic on 421 and 56. So in this alternative, we see the same general option of uh, 421 heading north and separating from 2nd Street and over. But rather than trying to connect 56 on the existing alignment, we carry the 56 traffic along 2nd Street and then north on Baltimore to connect to Main Street. And then in the final grade separated alternative, we still see that same general alignment with the northbound 421 being separated over 2nd Street and connecting to 56. But to continue to provide access to 2nd Street, there's a short access road that travels in a north to south direction along the, um, along the main alignment. And then the final group of alternatives, um, again, this first alternative sort of is a, is a result of the public meetings that we held in December. Um, a large volume of the, the community asked how we could separate 421 from the residential district that you see here. So as you depart from um, the bridge and you get on 421, the alignment changes to the east, connects to the intersection of Ferry Street and State Road, four, uh, State Road 56 in a roundabout alternative, and then um, provides access to 56 on its current alignment. And the final alternative that we see here um, sort of addresses the grade difference in a different way. Rather than trying to separate over 2nd Street, um, the, the, the purpose of this alternative is to cut through the bluff and connect 421 um, at grade with the 2nd Street intersection. Um, 
And in this alternative, 56 would be rerouted along 2nd Street to the intersection with 421. Well, thank you guys. That was great. Now we have a better understanding of the nine different options that we have. And do you have any idea approximately when the date of this project will start? So here's how we're going to get to construction. Uh, our plans are to take the feedback that we have been getting this week from the, the right. public meetings and then uh, refine these nine options down to ideally one and then come back before the community. We're thinking in the late summer, early fall to do a public hearing where we right. get formal comment on that option. So uh, we're moving very quickly. It's important that the public, if they have input, to provide it to us as early as possible. So depending on how this process goes from here to the end of the people coming to see things and asking questions will determine when the project actually begins. Right, so as soon as we have the environmental done, then right. we're going to go into design and land acquisition. Mm -hmm. We anticipate that'll last much of 2017 and 2018, and then begins the construction part. That'll be fun. I can't wait to see y'all do that. Um, now, the funding that comes for this bridge for the access ramp to the bridge. Mm -hmm. Where's the funding coming from for that? Sure, so this is a federal project and so the typical breakdown is 80% federal, 20% mm -hmm. state. So while everything hasn't been finalized, that's generally what we anticipate right now. Now, do you all see any extended closures with the bridge project as far as the access ramp and having to come across? And That, that certainly is possible, um, and that's why we also want to get input into uh, uh, the whole uh, construction process and, and the different alternatives. So as we develop the project further, um, when we have one route to recommend, then we'll have a better idea of that. And then, of course, right. getting into design and construction. So as time goes along, we'll have better information about that, right. um, recognizing that where we want to build is where the road is today. So trying right. to maintain as much access as possible, but also get the project done in a right. timely manner. So we can go from not having anything as far as an, a delay or anything on the bridge, depending on the actual route that they choose will determine whether there's going to be any disruption or not. Right. We, we have to build the project, but we also have to consider traffic, so uh, it's right. a balancing act between right. how quickly can you get the work done and how much access you can provide. Right. Well, that's going to be... You all will do it. You'll do fine. <laughs> oh, you always do. And then as far as there's a couple of things that you need to make sure people understand as far as the committee that's been set up. And is it a diverse committee or is it completely made up of people that are looking at historical preservation or how did you all decide how to do that committee? Sure, so one of the important things when developing a project like this is to make sure that we take into account the, the input from a, a wide range of community right. interests and, and that's how this community um, community Advisory Council was formed. We wanted to look at, at groups that sort of represented specific interests of the community, manufacturing, industrial logistics, economic development, the interests of the commercial corridor, um, also the historic preservation, and the residents that live in the community. So after we were able to take sort of input from each of those uh, groups, that's how we formed the committee. Well, that's, that's a lot of information for everybody to absorb. And Now, if they have any questions, if they don't come to this meeting that was just done, which obviously that's over, there's another meeting coming up. Yes. And so, that's on Thursday, mm -hmm. the 18th, and that, at what time? Uh, that meeting will be an open house format, so you can come yes. whenever you like from 4 to 7 at the mm -hmm. Brown Gym. And if you happen to miss that meeting, if you can't make it, um, we have project421.com as our website. Okay. All the information will be posted there, uh, along with the comment card and contact information. We want to get your input early into this process, and so make sure to contact us sooner rather than later. Oh, that's great. So if they can't make it, they can at least get online and, and give their input. For Absolutely. That. So is there anything else we need to make sure people understand as far as the process of all this? We're looking forward to seeing everyone provide their input so we can develop the best project possible. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Debbie Crawford with the Voices of Kentuckiana. Thanks for watching.